Jim's in Watford. Jim, what would you like to say? Uh, hello, James. Uh, well, one potential way of looking at this is, yes, we've got immigration into this country. We've got to offer these people a very safe and secure way of um, seeking asylum and going through the natural process then of whether they're legitimate or not. But perhaps one element to look at here is purely the cost of it. And by all accounts, it's costing £5 million a day. So £5 million a day, 365 days in the year, that's just under £2 billion. So when you take the... Sorry, what, budget, what is? What's costing that? So by all accounts, the government is... Well, what do you say by cost- all accounts? I don't mean which accounts. Well, the government actually declare, says that immigration costs five million pounds a day. No, it doesn't. I mean, Im- immigration is a is a net positive for the British economy. You must be talking about a specific. No, no, looking after asylum seekers. Well, that's nothing to do with immigration, is it? That's. I mean, you know, immigration is everybody who wasn't born here but currently works here, and the financial contribution that they make to the country. So, if you want to, by all accounts, it, we'd have to do a calculation there, wouldn't we? And also, I'm very much in favour of letting asylum seekers work, as they are permitted to do in other countries, in which case the cost becomes zero overnight. So we've solved that problem. I have no problem with that. If, if once they've actually proved who they are and what they are, because our borders no, are... They can, work, they, can are. Work, they can work while, they're, while the application is being processed. Well, I work in the military... In other countries. And, in other countries. Well... You know, I work in the military and, you know, part of my role is to keep this country safe. Yes. So by doing that, you, when you're actually seeing people actually rolling up on your doorsteps yes. without any paperwork, and there is an, a huge amount of well, they're, I mean, military... They're, but but they're, they're not going to go through the application process, are they, under your scheme? They're just going to disappear into the black economy. No, and that, and that of course, won't cost the country anything. Not at all. But anybody that's arriving in this country without yes. pay, without paperwork, that's seeking asylum, for instance, yes. we need to put them through a process. Now, one way of looking at this, what success could be like, is to reduce the cost of that. Well, you keep, you keep going on about this, but the cost of sending them to Rwanda as opposed to letting them work while they're being processed here is going to be immeasurably higher. Well... <laughs> I mean, you sound, I'm sure you don't mean to, but you sound like someone who's desperately trying to come up with a theory that doesn't sound callous and racist to justify something that actually appeals to you on a more base level. But I'm sure you're not. not. No, absolutely. I'm categorically sure you're not. I'm just warning you that that's what you sound like. It's just one way of looking at it. But it isn't, though, is it? We've just established that, that this is a pointless argument, which is why it sounds a little bit like a fig leaf designed to disguise something uglier, because you can reduce the costs of asylum applications overnight by letting asylum applicants work and earn, earn, earn a crust and even pay perhaps some taxes and the cost of sending them to Rwanda if there are five people on the plane tonight is going to be £100,000 per capita so how does that save us money? But that's assuming those people that, that are arriving in this country without any paperwork well, You keep saying that they're arriving English. without any paperwork so what, what, what do we do? This Iranian fellow, this Iranian policeman presumably arrived with his Iranian passport and they're trying to deport him so again it's one of those figures of speech that I keep hearing from people who seem to be desperately trying to, to sound well that's not beat about the bush, Jim. It's like a phrase that's used by people who are desperate to pretend they're not just racist. So what do we do with this Iranian police officer? He's got his passport with him. Why are you talking about people who haven't got any papers when he was supposed to be on the plane today? Well, once you've established who and what they are, but you firstly need to establish who and what they are. Well, that's what we do. That's the asylum application process. Yes. And And he's still getting deported. You're not being deported. He, he, mate, his ticket was cancelled yesterday. If it wasn't for those lefty lawyers, he'd be in Rwanda tonight. They're not deporting them. What they're actually doing is moving them off country into a safe place while they actually go through their process oh, of seeking sorry. asylum in this country. Yeah, and if it succeeds... No, Jim, you've misunderstood that as well. If, if the application succeeds, they stay in Rwanda, Jim. No, they have... Well, that's not what my understanding and My understanding I don't, is... They mate, with right. respect, I don't care what your understanding is. I, I deal in the facts. If the application is successful, they stay in Rwanda. So your whole well, support for this scheme is based upon ignorance. I, I, I wouldn't say that at all, James. Well, what would you say? How would you describe thinking something is true that categorically isn't? What word do you prefer? Because I'm keen to be generous. 
well, I've been you. You're telling me now something that is different to what I've I've been instructed about, which is the fact. Well, that who instructed you, Jim? Well, process a part of my job. So, yeah, who instructed you, know, you that the people who successfully apply for asylum in Rwanda get flown straight back to Britain? No, they they have they have a right. Then, if they're given no, they, they don't, Jim. British... So, but who instructed you this? Because if this is something that people in the British military are being instructed about, and it's categorically wrong, I'm 100 percent confident of that. We've got quite a big story on our hands, and I'll have to alert the news desk. So, who told you that well, the successful applicants can come back to Britain? James, I can't go into that. But... Oh, you have to, Jim. Seriously, it's all right. I've signed the Official Secrets Act. So I so yeah. So I who told you that, there, Jim? James? Who who told you that nonsense? Or have you just humiliated yourself on national radio? No, not at all. And you're, so who you told to you then? Perhaps James. Who you told to you, Jim? To some of your your colleagues. Poss possibly I do, Jim. But I'm listening to you. you. I'm listening to you at the moment. So who t who gave you this false information upon which you've based your entire support for a racist policy? It's not, James, it's not a racist policy. Mate, you didn't know what the policy was until I told you three minutes ago. How can you even no. have an opinion on it? Well, I've been told the policy is very different. By who? Who told you that? My superiors. Now you're lying. I'm not lying, James. Okay, so who told you that successful applications in Rwanda, just give me the sort of job description of what they do, or, or, or the rank. James, this is just coming down through paperwork. In how, how, can, you, can I see the paperwork? No, you can't see the paperwork. Because it doesn't exist, Jim. Nor can you. Paper it's imaginary paperwork. paperwork. <laughs> James, listen. I have listened. That's the problem, Jim. If I hadn't, no, no, no. you might have got away with some of this. But here you are, no. on, a, on a line. Not at all. The lips James. are moving. This is part of a conversation, James. You're saying one thing. No, no, no. I'm telling you the facts. And you're now spluttering inanely. I'm not spluttering inanely. Oh, no, you are. Again, that's another fact. Not at all. So, final chance. Who who gave you the duff information about this, James? It's duff in your opinion, That's and your not opinion an, it's only. It's not an opinion, Jim. It's it's written down in law. James, it's not written in law. Okay, Jim. You're going to tell me who told you? No. <laughs> Have a great day, mate. And you. Bye bye.